everybody. Welcome to Fair State Rocket League. Hope some of you are sticking around from the Overwatch stream that you just watched. Uh, Fair State taking the dub there. I don't follow Overwatch a whole lot, but that actually looked pretty exciting. Um, today we've got Crimson Team's second match of the season. They're up against Minnesota State. That is a different Minnesota State from the one they played last week. I think that was like Western Minnesota State or something like that. So we got Minnesota State University. What, what's on the end of that, Chaotix? Like Moore or something? Uh, yeah, Minnesota State University Moorhead campus. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of Minnesota teams were facing. The B team faced uh, University of Minnesota, and then last week Crimson also faced a Minnesota team. I think it was Southeast Minnesota. So, I Let's guess uh, it's Ferris versus Minnesota. <laughs> Too many Minnesotas. Okay, it looks like we're actually into the game already here, and right off the bat we got Chop Jr. coming in, scoring a goal. I don't know what happened, so let's see what happened. Uh, yeah, it looks like this game just started 450 in it. Nice little team clear there. I don't know if that kind of pinched out or what, but Chop Jr. starting it off strong. First thing you see on stream is a goal explosion. I like to see that. So, okay. Just going off yeah. car designs. These guys are legit. You know what? We got the, the anodized Fennec on the other side. Um, all right, Hoganator floating up in the air a little bit, looking to pass off. That's one thing that I really want to see today, Chaotix, is some passing plays. We saw a couple of them come out last week against... What am I going to call them? We're just going to go with Minnesota, and these guys are more heads. So against Minnesota, we saw some good passing plays. We saw some composure. And now we see a Merc from Sponge. That I like it. I like it already. Yeah, Sponge likes to switch up his cars a lot. And surprisingly, the Merc is actually one that he goes to quite often. And it gets and him a goal right it here. Works. <laughs> yeah, whatever works, you know works. What? I mean, Boston, Justin's it, played him hard. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're yeah. right off to the races here. We, we're not even a minute in. Ferris is already up 2-0. Um, yeah, I mean, they took a win in their first series last week. 3-1 win on the series. So this is going to be a best of five game. Um, so, yeah, there you go. You got the scoreboard going up on the top there. So Chop's going to take this off from the wall. It looks like he might have wanted to dump that off to Hoganator, but this is a little bit behind him there. And a big miss from Moorhead there. And Sponge is going to take his time, but he gets bumped off that by Trash. I promise you I'm not insulting him, that's his name. But Chop does a good, good job to defend that, and Moorhead kind of tripping themselves up. Stu, you want to go for that? And I think it was Trash came up behind him, and they kind of got a little bit off, and that allowed Ferris State to clear, but it comes right back into Ferris's half here. Let's see how they stay composed on defense. There's a pretty good clear from Pogue. Manages to keep that off from touching the ceiling and just lets it ride out. Still floating a little dangerously in Ferris's half, but that demo is going to open up a lot of opportunities, and it looks like we got a 2v1, and that's going to lead to a goal. That was a good play all the way from the back of the field. We had a demo upfield, I think. Yeah, Pogue got a little bit of a little bit of good fortune there. And then I think he just went on to get into Trash's camera, just kind of messed him up, took his attention off a of chop, and that allowed him to come in for the goal. This is looking really composed so far, Chaotix. What are you thinking? Yeah, I definitely think uh, from, from what I've seen, it seems like Ferris is just a faster team right now. They're uh, beating Minnesota to most of these challenges it seems like and uh, Minnesota kind of looking a little flat footed a lot of times just waiting on the ground when maybe they could have gone for it and that's a nice flick from uh, Stewie but it doesn't quite go in and Ferris now on the counter attack sponge might pass this to the mid and nothing quite from, and there's uh, that been opportunity seen. but it was a good opportunity there for Moorhead and they just kind of I don't know if there's a mechanical miss up misplay there but he didn't have teammates around them he didn't have a whole lot of options so I'm going to be curious to see yeah. if they have any adaptation in this game, or maybe they'll just take the loss in this game, kind of regroup and have a little communication in the gap between them. There's a banger from Chop Jr. who just puts it top right, posting in. I mean, you don't get any better place of a shot than that, and there's a nice pass out from Hogue to set it up. What a yeah. shot. I mean, nobody's taking that. Dude. Yeah, wow. that's, the, that's the kind of placement Stewie wanted on his shot earlier, but his yeah, just absolutely. bounced down and out. And yeah, Ferris with a four-goal lead. Uh, still over half the game left, so uh, it'd be hard to see them drop this one, but it's not impossible. And they just gotta stay strong on defense here, and this should be a good game one win for them, hopefully. Yeah, this is this is very impressive. They looked very solid last week. They did drop a game, and they looked a little flaky towards the end with some composure. Their their game one, they came running out. The game two was pretty strong, and then you know I'm I'm curious to see if they can keep this kind of composure all the way through all the games as a goal floats in for trash there. It looked a little awkward, a little bit of like a... I think he kind of tried to pre-jump this because he knew his teammate was coming in from behind him. And then, I, yeah, I'm not sure if maybe Hope went a little bit too far into the goal there, but still a three-goal lead with two minutes and 16 seconds left. This should be no problem for Ferris. 
Yeah, really great mechanics coming out there from Trash. You got the flip reset and then use it to get down to the ground quicker and just kind of guide it in. And uh, he, another great air dribble here gets him a second goal. Um, yeah, you think uh, some Ferris player should have been jumping at that a little bit sooner and not giving him all that space. Yeah, I noticed straight off the kickoff, um, they had two of them kind of fall back. I think they almost were competing for the same boost, so maybe a little bit of miscommunication. And that's the kind of thing that you're going to develop with your teammates over practice. This is only week two of this competition. Uh, this is the Collegiate Star League. This is week two. And so, you know, I'm sure they've been scrimming and they've played one actual series, but as we get deeper into the season, I think those kind of things will iron themselves out. They'll understand on instinct what their teammates are going to do off of those kickoff scenarios and things like that. But Moorhead is making this interesting. Two goals in very rapid succession from Trash, trying to put the team on his back. This one floating around in Ferris' yeah. half a little bit, actually, as Grant goes up for that, and that's going to bounce off the back wall just a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, with uh, them going for the same boost, I know Sponge and Chops are both uh, very oh, high-speed offensive players. And, and, beautiful uh, team demo there. The communication coming out. Look at Chops. He misses the shot, and he just says, you know what? If I can't hit the ball, I'll hit the player instead, and just takes Grant out of the equation entirely. Hogue just gets the easiest goal of his life. Good adaptation there. Yeah, that's a great play, and that's the kind of stuff that Ferris does pretty well, I think. And uh, when you don't see them going for those demo plays like that, then you know something's wrong. Because that's, that's their bread and stuff, butter. Right? Grant is like, you know what, I had that one saved, I was ready for it, and then ready to start this next play, he got demo too. Because this one's kind of dangerously floating in again, Sponge is keeping it in. Now he's going to go for the bump on Trash, he gets it, and it actually, almost kind of accidentally flicks it for him, but it'll work. And there's a nice shot opportunity for Sponge, he at least gets it down to the back wall, puts it behind everybody. He's going to go steal one of the Moorhead boosts. And this one's just getting further and further out of reach for Moorhead as they're down with three goals to go. 45 seconds to do it. I'd be surprised to see the comeback, but they have made this more interesting. A sponge is coming in for a shot there, and that one's going in. That's a nice, powerful aerial using that full body of the Mert to just slam it home. Trash doing everything he can to get that up in the air. And sponge, you know what? He put the shot right where he needed to. Grant didn't quite get the 50 50 he was looking for, and this one's going to be a Ferris stuff. Again, best of five series. We still have at least two more games to play here. Ferris looking really good. Yeah, the Merc was just bigger and stronger, and it won that 50-50 right into the net for Sponge. And uh, like I was trying to say earlier, uh, Sponge and Chops specifically both like to play at a very high speed. And so with that, sometimes comes uh, a little bit of boost management struggles, I think. And uh, they seem to work it out in the later half of this game. But I know when they're not playing their best, it's because they're struggling for boost and kind of almost competing with each other over it. And uh, it's good to see them work that out and kind of share the boost a little more evenly. Yeah, for sure. And this one will hit the ground. This will take us to the end of that game. So I agree. I mean, they're looking solid. I don't think you changed the game plan at all, do you? Or is there anything that you want to see any different in this next match? Uh, I mean, obviously they got the win here. So whatever they're doing was working well enough. And I think they got, you know, they had a few first game jitters, I think and they kind of worked those out and towards the end of that they were playing really solid all around um if they really want more success i'd tell them to continue going for that demo play yeah i, I like the demo play because not only is it the goal in the short term but it's just a mental game i know when i play against players that are very demo heavy like that it, it just gets in your head it's like okay i can save this but is he coming up is he breathing on my neck there's an immediate shot from Chop Jr. A little bit off the post, makes the defender jump for it. And so let's see how they handle this. It looks like Hogue puts that off for his teammate, leaves it. Good communication there. Um, I'm not sure about Sponge rotating in towards the play like that, but they managed to get around it pretty well. Ferris State looking pretty boost start right there as that mid boost also gets stolen from them. Sponge is on zero, Hogue is on zero. So let's see how they stand up for this attack. That clear is going to go a long way to do it. Trash sitting here with 73. And that one kind of goes out, but I don't know where Grant really wanted to place that. I don't know if that's a long pass, but Hogue is just going to say, you know what, I don't care where your pass is, I'm shooting the ball. And that one just goes right off the post, pretty close. And there's another good shot for Sponge. Trash come out. Trash is standing out on this other team for me. Moorhead, I mean, he has been the guy to do everything so far. Yeah, he's definitely been the most mechanical on the team. 
uh, really carrying the offense for them at least. And uh, when you're when you're playing with a player like that, you know, in these collegiate leagues, sometimes you have a player on team that's just a lot higher ranked than the other two. And I know from my own personal experience, it's sometimes a little difficult to play with someone that's a lot better than you on your team, just because they play at a different speed, they do different things than what you're maybe used to and ranked, and so it's a little hard to get the team chemistry uh, when you have a uh, hard carry like that. Yeah, I'm curious to, to keep an eye on the boost management for um, Stewie and Grant here to see if, you know, I don't, I haven't noticed them being particularly starved or full, but I know one thing that we've seen from old Ferris teams when we had players way above the rest is some boost management issues like you brought up with this team that they're doing well so far. Oh, go for an aerial there, and he's going to try to pinch that down. Looking for the dunk here. Let's see if he goes for a demo on this last guy. Instead, he, he kind of gets the bump and the ball at the same time, the best of both worlds. Oh, that's a big miss right there. Trash leaving it for his teammate, but Hogue's going to have a chance to take this up in the air. He's in the direction of arrow roll, and that's, I don't know if it's a miscommunication or what, but you know what, it works out chop. You know, he says, you know what, I don't care if you're going for that ball. I know I haven't hit on it. So, let's see. Did he pinch this down? Oh, that's a beautiful shot from Chop Jr. The, the ground double tap, that's, that's, that's attractive. Look at that goal. So Ferris goes up. This is not the pounding that it was with 2.45 left in the first game, but still looking pretty good, and that's a dangerous hit there from Sponge. But he manages it out, and don't own goal that. Oh, Hogue, you're scaring me, man. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> I thought for yeah. sure he was in that home. And there's a nice shot. Yeah, and here's the goal. Cool. Ferris nice hits it. Ferris clears it across their own goal line two times in a row. That, that can't go unpunished. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Trash is here to put it in off the crossbar. And it's all tied up. Uh, I was say this time last game Ferris was up by four goals, and now now it's a much different story. They're gonna. Uh, I don't know if maybe they got a little complacent after winning so easily, but they gotta Ooh. turn up the gears here and get that offense rolling again. I'm thinking Hoag's gonna want that chance back. He had a good setup for double tap. It was trash. A little bit of off target with that shot. Didn't need to be saved, but it's a good save anyways for Sponge there to put it in a better position. Hogue sees Chops rotating in behind him. Chops going to have to get a good, good clear off the back wall, and he does at least get it out. Let's see if he actually has a shot off of that. Trash coming in and cuts that off. And there's a beautiful little air roll there for Sponge to just get that cleared to the perfect angle. Put that where the defenders weren't. Let's see if he can pass this mid. Boom, that's a bad hit out. But Hogue is ready for it. He's not going to have a second hit, though, as Grant is coming in. This one floating dangerously in front of Ferris's goal. This might actually progress into an attacking opportunity. Chops coming in, and that's going to float to the middle. Trash on low boost manages to clear that out. Let's see if he has another hit. No, Hogue takes it away from him. And let's see the communication from Ferris here. You have two players rotating out at the same time. And that's exactly what you're going to see. You see Sponge rotating back in for Hogue to go get that mid boost. And I think he might have actually went all the way back at the end of the day. That's a dangerous ball in. That's going to be a shot. Moorhead and a beautiful save from Chop Jr. He is showing up in this match after a very dangerous pass to the other team. And here he goes again. He's pushing. I don't think he has a whole lot of boost, and that one just got stolen out from him again. Trash slowing this play down. So this one's a little bit yeah, more Ferris of a scuffle. Is... Yeah. yeah, Ferris is holding on, but uh, Minnesota or Moorhead or whatever you want to call them, they've had uh, a decent bit of offense here. And uh, they're definitely doing a little bit of a better job communicating, I think. I haven't seen quite as many double commits out of them, and they're holding their boost well, and so it's making it a little bit harder for Bears to get the same kind of goals they were getting last game. I think they just tried to pull an Uno reverse with that demo play from the first game there. You saw one of the more headed attackers miss the ball and kind of go forward at the, at the Ferris defense, but they held up well. Is this one's just going to be poked in the midfield. Let's see if this leads to a shot. Hogue either fakes it, oh, he passes it across, Little team bump there coming out from Moorhead. You can see that 20 second desperation coming out, but neither team needs a goal. I mean, they're tied up, so let's see if we just play for the overtime here. If somebody has a chance in the last 10 seconds here, Stewie looks like he might be passing this across the midfield, but he gets it out well. Chop looking to cut this off, doesn't quite get a good hit on that, but that one's coming out to the midfield. But this almost touches the ground. Let's see if we get a zero second goal here. That's a dangerous ball. Chop Jr. coming up, he puts it mid. Is anybody from Ferris State there for that? There's a demo coming out, and that one's going to touch the ground. We go to overtime. Yeah, and I, I'd like to see a, a little bit more uh, commitment kind of from both teams because it seemed like the last 30 seconds there, everyone was just leaving 
a ton of space and time on the ball for other people. Like no one was really challenging and attacking it. There was a lot of dead time, I guess. And, Very uh, dangerous coming out there. Yeah, it's almost almost going, going in there. Well, and they're stealing Ferris's boost. I mean, Ferris needs a big clear or maybe a nice little one-two pass play, but that's a dangerous ball up. Is anybody there? Two players commit, and there's the goal. You see it coming, the, the dangerous hit to the midfield there, and even though they double committed, that just means twice the shooting power sometimes. Hoganator doesn't know who's going to hit that. It's hard for him to defend that when you don't know which one of them's going to take the shot. So this series is going to tie up 1-1. Very even match after a very one-sided match, and there he is, Trash, the man of the hour, put the team on his back. Didn't end up with the overtime goal. Stewie putting in his part two. So that was that was a very different game from game one. Did you see anything that Ferris did wrong in that game, or was that a case of Moorhead just stepping up? Um, like I was saying, I I, I don't I don't know why, but it seems to me like Ferris maybe got a little complacent after winning that first game so easily they weren't uh quite challenging things with as much aggression they were a little more passive and kind of waiting for the other team to hit the ball to them and they, they need some more of that aggression i don't think i saw a lot of demo plays out of them either which is what i was saying is the key to their success yeah i think they gotta put a put a bounty out on trash's head here as they immediately bump him out it's like they're listening to the stream hey guys Trash looking to take another shot, and there's the demo play coming out from the wrong side. I mean, he's just unstoppable. He is so good today. Maybe he's just always like this. Trash just turns on a dime. Stewie's getting the demo in the backfield, and then, you know, Trash yeah. just gets the demo at the end of his shot <laughs> for good measure. By the time that not. ball goes in, by the time that ball goes in, all three Ferris players are out the field. Stewie got a double oh. demo, and then <laughs> Trash demoed the third player right after he got the shot. And yeah, that it's, it seems like there, yeah, Minnesota really turned this back on Ferris, and it's kind of using those demo plays in the same way that Ferris did in the first game. And uh, yeah, maybe that maybe that makes him mad. Oh yeah, no, they they lit a flame under him. So I think we got a real series here. I was starting <laughs> to wonder if they're going to just be coasting after that game one, but. We're seeing a little more flair out of even Stewie and Grant here. It's not just the trash show right now. This is a good opportunity for Ferris, and Grant just pile drives his way through. He turned his brain off, he turned his boost on, and just drove right through that ball. Chop Jr. looking to have his own say about it, but it's bumped in midair. He's also completely out of boost here, so he's going to have to go back. He leaves it for Hoganator. He forces Trash to flick it high, but no Ferris players follow that up, and Trash just has a free look on the goal. And when you have a play like that, like Hoganator diving in to force the flick, somebody has to be challenging right here. And, and neither of the Ferris players are there ready for it and just gave them Trash so much space to work with. So Yeah, knowing that a player like Trash has such great mechanics like that, you you got to send someone to challenge him early. You know, you can't give him space because you know he's going to use that space and make it a lot harder for you to save the shot. So they just need to send someone to challenge the ball, make sure he can't do what he wants with it. At least if you can't hit the ball, bump the player. Absolutely. And again, it goes back to what we were saying between those two games you were mentioning their aggression. I mean, we're not seeing any bumps or demos coming out from Ferris' side, and it looks like Moorhead's starting to incorporate that quite heavily. But one demo comes out on Stewie there, and Sponge almost has a shot, just gets swallowed up by two defenders. But there's a double commit from Moorhead. Trash picks up that mid-boost. He's going to be an instant impact right there. And right there, we see good aggression from Ferris coming out. They do look like they're rotating well as a team but it needs to be an aggressive form rotation. There's a good pass out mid by Sponge, and that just leaves the goal wide open. A little bit of good fortune there, and there's another post hit. Ferris just hanging on by a thread. They are down by two with two minutes and 50 seconds left in this game. Good hit around from Sponge to try to hit that mid, but there's nothing to follow it up. <clears throat> yeah, I... I don't know if they're losing the boost game now or what. That, that might be part of it, because I do see a lot of opportunities where... Ferris could have pushed forward, but the player who was the one to do it just didn't quite have the boost and didn't want to commit. Yeah, it, 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 it's almost looking more like a ranked game than a team game. Somehow that floats in for Chop Jr. It looks like he secured the goal at the end, but let's see how exactly this actually progressed. Oh, so gets it off the wall. This looks like nobody's home for Moorhead, so if you know what, we'll take it. A um, little bit of a strange goal there, but yeah. it does put Ferris within one. 2.22 left. 
Yeah, and I think the finish there from Chop was kind of necessary because it looked like it was maybe hitting off the post and Grant might have got there for the save. So it's a good thing he was there that time. And uh, that's the kind of awareness that Ferris needs a little bit more of, just having the player there at the right time to finish it. So Chop Jr. going to try to pass this midfield again. He's just kind of trying to stay aggressive on zero boost, doing whatever he can. Trash is going to pick this up on his hood, and somebody's got to be sending him right there. I mean, good challenge from Hogue. A little bit later now, I would like to see it, but somebody did it eventually and stopped the play. It's going to have to be a good clear from Chop, and that's kind of a it's going to float midfield if Hogue can actually get around that. That's a tough angle. He gets the bump on Trash there. We're, we're seeing it come back out a little bit. We're, we're starting to see Ferris get back to how they were in game one. That one's going to come straight down. Sponge being aggressive. Not quite the hit you'd like to see there, but at least forward progress on it. Trash on zero boost is not going to be an impact on that, but he's going to pick up Ferris' full boost in the back corner there as well. Sponge does a good job to just stuff the stuff the offense there for a quick second. But pass out mid to Sponge. That's a, er, that was out to chop. That was good communication there from Ferris. Or good situational awareness at the very least. A double commit on the shot there. Moorhead's sensing blood in the water. They're sending the resources out, and hopefully Ferris is able to take advantage of that, because we've seen that a couple of times this game so far. Oh, and Hogue just gets absolutely oh, no. stopped by Grant. I mean, he took the patient play. I can see what he was trying to do here, but he just got absolutely dunked. Grant read him like a book. So that's going to make this a tough game for Ferris to win. Down two with a minute left. Definitely doable. This kickoff's going to be important. Yeah, uh, Minnesota definitely stepping up the aggression, and I can kind of feel it from both teams too. For a while, a lot of hitting it north and leaving space, but both teams started attacking the ball. And something's going to happen soon, and it turns out <laughs> it's a goal for Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, you can see Ferris yeah, uh, starting to pick a little bit. They know they need a goal ASAP, and there's a good pass out from Chop, but just nobody there to receive it. I mean,. I don't, I don't know where the communication is breaking down here. I don't know if the bumps and doubles are playing in, but Ferris needs a goal and they need it now. So let's see if they're just going to send it. This is there's probably going to be another goal in here. It's just a question of which side's going to get it. Ferris is going to have to send everything they got. And there's a nice shot in. Sponge doing everything he can, but this looks like it is going to be a little bit out of reach for Ferris. They are going to have two more chances to win this series, but it is going to be two to one in favor of Moorhead. See, yeah, it's a big it turnaround up. for uh, Moorhead here. They they Man, clearly that, adapted that, yeah. to what Ferris was thrown at them, and <laughs> it worked out, and they've won two games in a row since then. So now it's now it's the balls in Ferris's court. They gotta figure out what they need to change to get past this uh, Moorhead defense. And I think yeah. you know the key is to kind of contain uh, trash. Because he is their most mechanical player, and yeah. that's just something they they gotta figure out. And hopefully, that's what they're talking about in between games here. Yeah, I definitely think you nailed it with the aggression and the bumps and demos. I mean, I think that is how they contain trash. Maybe they didn't know that's what they were doing, but they unlocked him as soon as they stopped getting in his face. So I do see. I think that was Hoganator going for a demo in there. So they're thinking about. It. They're trying. There's a good shot on and the demo coming off. Camera got a little smoke screen, but here's another shot opportunity, and that one's just a little bit off. It would have been saved by Stu either way. So I like what I see out of the first 30 seconds here. Not coming to much yet, but Sponge can try to take this up the wall. Trash contesting it, and just puts it straight around him, goes straight to the air, puts a shot down. I'm glad he didn't get a better touch on that, because that was looking dangerous right off the bat. I mean, he, you can tell that he's just very, very comfortable with being in the air. That's something that, at this level of competition, that's going to be a big differentiating factor for teams. Even just having one of those players. Hogue trying to be that guy. At least gets a hit off on Trash and prevents his second touch. But this is going to be a shot opportunity for Moorhead. Stewie coming in and he gets the goal. Oh, the, the Ferris defender jump. I don't know who that was exactly. It was this Chops the whole time? Yeah, I mean, he hits it off the wall. Yeah, I think it was Chop. It. it looks like he was. Looks like he kind of ran into the crossbar a little bit. Yeah, I think he was, he was going up the wall out there. of boost, so he was trying to use the side of the goal to at least get up in the air to try to block the shot. I mean, a good idea. He just had no support. I don't know where the rest of the Ferris players were. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure either, but I, I do see uh, signs of hope in Ferris's offense. They've been getting a few demos here and there, and it's helping to alleviate some of the pressure. 
and uh, they just they just need to keep that up. And also, I think they need to go for a little bit more boost steals because Morehead almost always has the resources they need to keep the ball out of their net. And demos are going to be a lot more effective when the other players are also on full boost. Yeah, we did see one come out right as you said that. We had a Moorhead defender kind of commit himself to the Ferris half, and Chops just kind of cut him off. There's a good pre-jump a little bit from Poganator there. That's going to require a save from Stewie, who handles it no problem. Good opportunity there. And you're right, we are seeing little flashes. We're seeing something a lot better than the last two games we saw. That's kind of a dangerous pass to a little bit of everybody. That could have gone either way. Sponge, zero boost, nothing to work with. Still manages to push it out, but it's still in the Ferris half. He does pick up that full mid boost. He's going to let Chops go do his thing. Poke's going to try to either pass that off or shoot it. It looks like he'll extra pass. Just a booming clear right there. That is going to be the end of that offense. Sponge got a little bit of boost with the work within the air, and that's a nice pass down. Let's see if Chops gets aggressive on this. Yeah, I was a little worried about the shot off of that. But he's coming around. He's staying with this. Um, nobody there with him, so he pounds it off the back wall. It's at least going to burn a little bit of boost from Moorhead's side. He looks for that back left boost, but it wasn't there, so they must have just picked that up. So they're doing the right things. Um, they do need a goal here. Um, if Moorhead wins this game, they will win the series. This is the best of five, as you can see on the bottom. So, a little over halfway. I think there's still some hope. Like, they're looking better. The trash has not been as flashy. So they're, they're working on it. They're getting there. They just need to step it up just a little bit here and prove why they are in the start league. Yeah, they're picking up the speed a little bit, which... It's making it a little harder for Minnesota to set up their offense, at least. And Ferris uh, might begin a little bit of offense of their own here. And uh, it seems like they are doing a better job of controlling the boost as well. And that's what's helping them kind of stay even in this match. They just need to get that one big bumper demo, I think, and it'll really open things up for them because they're playing a lot better now. And that is a shot on there, and also a little bit of miscommunication there. And yeah, Trash just bumps into. I think that was Stu. No, there it is. There. So, and there's a big. There's demo. another one. Nobody's home. I mean, you can't send everybody at the same time. But that was a good chance for Ferris. I'm, I'm going the flip reset coming off from Trash here, and he's also going for a bump. Ferris sends two because they know he's dangerous. Yeah, we got a little bit. Of yeah, if you're gonna to double commit. That's that's the time to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Ferris maintaining well on defense here, but with one minute to go, they do not need defense right now. I mean, I know a good defense is the best offense, but no, you just need offense right now, guys. Yeah, that okay, ball kind of got kind of trapped of in the Ferris corner for a little bit there, and it sort of killed a lot of the momentum that Ferris had been building, I think. And so they're going to kind of have to start over a little bit here, and if they can get a demo onto Trash, I think that will open up plenty of room for them. And Speaking of that, that is Caster's Curse right there. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody lodge your complaints to at Chaotix after the game for that one. <laughs> You're not even yeah, on Twitter. Yeah, that was just great you? speed from him. I am not on Twitter now, but... Yeah, that was just great speed from Trash. I don't think Chop was quite ready for it, and he was also the only one back, so... That, that kind of just meant that the ball was going in. Trash looking for a little freestyle, can get the double tap off the back wall. He just runs out of boost there. Ferris is just going to have to send it. They need a goal immediately. Maybe just send somebody upfield, go punch for some demos. And this is going to be a good opportunity right there, a good clear out. Can they get the double off the wall? Hogue kind of, I don't know if he really meant to hit that, but that's still a decent opportunity. Ferris needs something on this play right here to even have a chance on maybe some kind of weird kickoff strat. Zero seconds, pushing it mid. Is anybody there? It was a chance and just, it was so close. Yes, so far. So, Fair State is going to drop this series. Stewie looking to put one in more for insurance. But no. Minnesota State, Moorhead, they are going to take this series. I mean, that first game looked so good and then just collapsed from there. I mean, that last game, at least they looked a little better than the other two games that they lost, but it just, it just wasn't there. Yeah, they, they definitely had their chances, though, and I just feel like they didn't really capitalize on them as much as they could have. A lot of balls being passed out into the middle right in front of the net and the player to finish the goal just wasn't there. Um, and so yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if that's more Ferris falling apart or if it's just Minnesota adapting and figuring out what they needed to do to kind of choke out the Ferris offense. I, I really think it was a little bit of both. I think Minnesota definitely stepped up in the later games, but 
I mean, you came in partway through on the, the last series last week against the other Minnesota State, and we kind of saw the same thing. Ferris just dominating out early, and then, you know, they, they pulled it together at the end in that series, but the middle of it was a little rough and shaky, too. I don't know if this is maybe a little bit of over-communication and they're just trying to think too hard or they're just playing their game or what, but, you know, I think this is good. They're going to learn from it. Um, you know, they, they do go to one-on-one on the season, but, I mean, that was a very good team. Trash was clearly a very good player. I'm going to look him up on the Rocket Tracker afterwards. I would not be surprised <laughs> to see. What do you think? GC2? Um, yeah, maybe even GC3. He was, he was getting a lot of flip resets. Stuff like that. I mean, in threes, uh, even in, even in GC one, you don't see a lot of flip resets in Champ three or in threes. I mean, at yeah. least not very effective ones. Yeah, and I feel like his teammates were complimenting him well. I mean, they gave him the space to do what he needed to. They they all kind of had boost. I don't know if they were just better at boost management or if they were picking up a lot of pads or what was going on. But you know, I didn't see a whole lot of you know the miss the mismatch that you you talked about that in the middle of one of those games about if you have one player that's so clearly better than the other two sometimes you end up choking out that, those other two players and they don't really get the chance to have an impact but they all look like they complemented each other pretty well yeah they definitely knew how to play together well i think i i didn't see a whole lot of there there were some team bumps and stuff like that and maybe a few small double commits but they never really got punished for it Whereas Ferris was always getting punished for it. So uh, it's something they could improve on. And, um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a terrible showing from Ferris. No, but not at all. They, they at least got a game off of them. And, yeah, they, yeah I, they go one and one on the season. I mean, I feel like it's going to be a good learning opportunity. I hope they save the replays. And, I don't know, maybe you and I can look, it over and look over the replays with them later on. Because... I feel like there's some kind of lesson to be learned with how dominant that first game was versus how the rest of them went. Yeah, when you beat a team like that once, you think you should be able to do it again and again and again. So something was different in games two, three, and four that they just need to figure out. And hopefully we see them bounce back and get a big win next week. Yeah, that's that's really all I have to say. I mean, Kax, do you know if we have any more matches tonight? I haven't heard of any. I think we're done, maybe? Yes, we are all done. Yeah, I, I would hope not. It's almost 7 p.m. That'd be pretty late. So, <laughs> so yeah, we're all, we're all done with Ferris Esports for today. But we will see you again next week with more Rocket League and all the other esports, League of Legends, Overwatch. Probably some Call of Duty. Duty. Yeah. I'm probably missing something, but there's plenty of esports here to see at Ferris. And, uh, yeah, we hope you tune in for the next time.